Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Whoa, wow. Uh, there's a lot of energy in here. I know some of us are very tired and jet lagged. We'd like to really tap into that energy today. So this is a day that the Lord has made, rain or shine, but, and let's rejoice and be glad. So hopefully the clouds will part by the time service is over and we can have our picnic, but we'll make the best of it anyway. So this time, Sheila will lead us forward with the announcement. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, are there any announcements this morning besides that there's a church picnic afterwards, and we hope you stay on after and enjoy that? Yes, Ron. That's something we, we did a lot over there. It's universal. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other, any other announcements? Okay. Uh, we have birthdays to celebrate this coming week. So happy birthday to Doug Klum, Marilyn Durth, and Linda Miller. And our monthly mission for the uh, month of August is uh, Paper Products for Friends, Inc. If there are no other announcements, let's stand for our call to worship. May the peace of God rest upon your busy lives so that you may be quieted into prayer. May the love of God flow through your worship words that they may be alive with opportunities for service. May the grace of God seek out your every need and may the restless gospel set your hearts afire Amen, amen and amen. amen. Please join together with our opening prayer. <coughs> we thank you, gracious God, that you hear us when we pray to you. Make us bold to trust you. Make us patient to wait on you. You open wide the door to your heart when we knock. Help us to respond by opening to you. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Praise Ye the Lord, the Almighty. Would you please be seated? You know, I don't think we need to travel the world to know that God is love. 
that God loves us no matter who we are, and that sometimes we may feel lost and alone. God is always standing at the door knocking that we might, that we might open that door, open that door to love. That gives us some freedom to confess our sins, knowing that, uh, knowing that God is there to pick us up, to help dust us off and get us back into the road of life again. So would you please join together with me at this time in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Oh God, whose very name is love, we mean to do well, but our intentions are sometimes discarded. We try to be faithful, but we are sometimes diverted by many things. We do not wish to harm anyone, but for lack of consideration, we sometimes hurt those we love the most. We sympathize for those who suffer more often than we act with them. We sometimes refuse to accept the help of others because we are unwilling to admit our needs. We too can say with the man who came to you, Lord Jesus, I am not worthy that you should enter my house. Only say the word and I shall be healed. Please join me in our unison assurance of pardon. The good news is that we don't have to depend upon ourselves, but on the Spirit of God to give us vitality. Thanks be to God. Amen. visiting us perhaps and here for the picnic for the first time we greet each other in Christian love we do a couple of three things you do whatever is comfortable for you but pass a piece of Christ you can give each other a holy hug or you can just wait uh, it's permanent advantage, so I'll tell you one wait a minute wait a minute I went in this group
You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm chapter 27, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me, uttering slanders against me, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above mine enemies round about me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Awesome job, Sheila. The, um, my trip to Ukraine was really a team effort, and I couldn't have done it without you and Patty and others. just want you to know that. Actually, I'm going to be sharing a lot more scripture verses probably uh, and alluding to this, um, but I'm just going to give you a brief version before Dennis comes up and sings. Luke 8, verses, chapter 8, verse 1, and just a portion of John, the first chapter, just can't give you a sense. Soon after, he went through the cities and villages, preaching and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And as he passed by, he saw a blind man from his birth, and of course we know the rest of that story, he healed him. May God's blessing be added to the sharing of these and other words which will follow. Amen. Dennis, come on up. Uh, the song I'm going to sing, uh, I sang when uh, Pastor Greg was installed here at our church, and I think it's only fitting that today we'd, I'd sing it again. And then later at uh, 11 o'clock, uh, while they're getting the food ready, I'll be singing outside. Hopefully it's not raining out there. <laughs> yeah. Bear with me a second. Shut down. Ah, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not the song we wanted. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll try that again. <laughs> That's Ken and Marge's song. Yeah, Mark uh, helped me uh, key that song down because I tried singing it on our bus trip and it's so high and actually we had to go down two and a half steps. So now I got it in my key. Uh, okay, now. There we go. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. And I think 
of God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation to take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow when humble adoration and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Thank you. And thanks for coming back. I'm <laughs> glad you made it back. Good to be back. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Take your time. Young people, come on up here with me, please. I'm going to teach you some Ukrainian today. Okay. Come on up. Come on up. You know the routine. I can still sit down and get up without help. Much. Okay. All right. And Cindy, you can sit up here with him, too, if you want. Come on, Cindy. All right. So, you know the routine. I'm going to ask you guys, how are you doing? Wait a minute. How are you doing? Good. Uh, Randy back there. See, Randy in the back, he can go, eh. Let's try it again. How are you doing today? Good. All right. All right. You know, before church started, I, could, I wish I could have just tapped into all that energy that everybody was having. It's, it's a really good thing. Well, it's good to be back. You guys know where Ukraine is? You know where Ukraine is? It's... Pretty much the other side of the world, but not quite. Yeah. Anyway, I've got a shirt on today. I will give you a, an imaginary emoji sticker of some sort. Um, if you can guess what this says on the front or the back. Okay? So I'm going to get up. Okay. So take a look at it. It's in Ukrainian. Okay. Now look at the back. What does that say? You want to take a guess? You want to take a guess? All right. <laughs> Whatever. It, it is chaplain. They're Christian chaplains. Yeah, they're Christian chaplains. Now, I'm going to show you something else that we did a lot over there. Do you know what this is? You probably know what this is. What, when, when I do this, what am I doing? Heart. Close. I'll give you a part of a star. Anybody else? What is it? When I tap, you've seen people like kind of tap their heart like at a concert or something like that? If we're up on a stage, we do that a lot. What's that? It, it's kind of like, I love you. Kind of like, I love you. And we were doing that a lot because some things are universal. And what, the reason we come to church in Sunday school and in Ukraine, God's love is God's love. It's everywhere. We just have to get into it and tap into it. And that's why we come to church in Sunday school and develop a thing we call faith. So... I'm going to be talking about Ukraine today, but it's good to see you guys. So next time you see somebody, somebody says something nice to you, go like this. I care. I love you. Okay? Let's have a word of prayer. I think I heard that in an airplane a few times. <laughs> Join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your love. 
which really, you know, you give to all of us. We just have to tap into that. We thank you, God, for these young people. Bless their lives. Bless their week. Amen. Okay. You can go back. Don't worry about the screams, parents, because I heard a lot of that on a lot of airplane flights. My favorite time is spending with the kids, so. All right. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? God, may the words which I'm about to utter and the privilege that I now assume be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Now, my text this morning was talking about as Jesus passed by. You know, um, Christian disciples didn't end with Scripture because we can be contemporary disciples, you know, and, and that's essentially what we felt like when we went to Ukraine. It is good to be home, um, but I have to tell you, I am exhausted, and it's not just jet lag from eight hours time difference, it's averaging about two or three hours of sleep a night, um, 2,600 kilometers, 17 hours of driving to get to the Warsaw Airport, crossing borders, all of that, and it did make me realize that I'm not 25 anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In fact, when I was doing a TV interview, I said, could you just get some mortician spotty or something? I mean, not, no offense, but uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm not vain, but I felt like I needed to do that. But you know what? It's good to be back. And there are a number of Ukrainians, chaplains, who are watching the service today, even though it's eight hours time difference there. But I carry in my heart the love given to me by the dear people from Ukraine. And I bear that love back to you because we're all a part of God's world. And even though great distances separate us, I know without a doubt that God's love knows no bound. If you think it does, I don't like what that says about God. No distance, no length of time past can break that bond. I think Paul had something to say about that. Or even death, as the Apostle Paul talks about it, can break the bond of love. For God's love never ends. That's also from Scripture, isn't it? Now many will ask, many will ask and have asked already, what was it like over there? Now it's one thing if you go and say on a really eventful vacation for you to kind of come back and people say, what was it like? And you know how hard that is. Imagine going into a war zone, as some of you have done, and coming back and people asking you, what was it like over there? I'm talking to my veteran friends here because they kind of get it, see some heads nodding. Um, many will ask that question, and I try as best I can to answer it. I'm going to try to answer it for you in, 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 as, as we kind of pass by kind of sermon today. But in the days ahead, I will share as best I can our experiences while over there. I am hoping to actually have enough energy to put together some presentations, um, probably after Labor Day sometime. This old, this old body of mine can kind of recuperate a little bit. But in the days ahead, I will share all of that. But I will say this, each of us who went over there on this trip came back changed. And changed in a way that only close contact with other people, hurting people, people yearning for our presence, our love, our ministry can bring. We were brought to tears on more occasions than I can recall. Now, I'm, I, I tell people, you know, I, I feel very deeply, and a sign of tears is not a sign of weakness. I actually probably talked about that to some, some of the cadets over in Ukraine, uh, police cadets. But I said, if you get to know me inside, I'm an incredibly strong person, and that's not bragging. I just happen to feel very deeply. So on more occasions than, I've, than I can imagine, we felt the deep love that abides us now and always. Yet we all feel that the people of Ukraine gave us more than we brought them. That's, that's kind of the way it is sometimes. Their faith, their resilience, their grit, and their tenacity in the face of horrific experience facing a Goliath in Russia, day after day, moved us deeply. Their joy at our arrival was, was humbling. As I was pondering as we passed by from city to city, 
in city to small community where there was destruction in many places that we saw. I thought about Jesus' ministry, and I thought about today, and his disciples' ministry, which was from person to person, if you really study scripture. And his disciples passed by. The text which jumped out for me the most, and I'll, I'll kind of go through some of this a little bit, was that brief text from Luke in, in particular with the 8th chapter, verse 1. And after, Jesus, after this, Jesus traveled from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, and the 12 were with him. Now think about this. Jesus went from town to town ministering person to person. As Jesus passed by, he touched and healed a man with leprosy. As he passed by, he touched the eyes of two blind men, and he healed them. And as he passed by on his way to heal Jairus' daughter, a woman touches his robe. He feels the power going out of him, and she is healed. As Jesus passed by, he inspired, he gave hope and healing along the way. Now, in no way can we equate with what Jesus did. But he did say, go and do likewise, didn't he? In our own way, in our own, in our own capacities. And so we went. And to a person, we are so glad that we were used by Christ in such a way. It only makes me a better pastor for having experiences like that. As we pass by, let's get into it. Our first stop after landing in Warsaw, Poland, was in Rydny, Ukraine, a journey of nearly six hours, actually 10 hours from the time we left Warsaw. Time went to Rydny, which was actually close to Belarus, where Russia first staged its parade of, of military you know, hardware coming down, thinking they're going to just waltz into Ukraine and take it over. And after arriving, we were told the first day was a rest day. We got there at 5 in the morning. We got there at 5 in the morning, and I had to present and talk to the police at 8 o'clock. That was our rest day. Okay? You with me? I'm making you tired yet? So we had to get up about 7 to get cleaned up. Um, and we were driven to re regional police headquarters to meet with the police administration. Chaplains I had trained and worked with in that region saw us coming up in, this, in special vans that they have, uh, some of their bullet bulletproof vans, um, and, and greeted us at South Lake Police Station, and they were waving at us before we got out of the vans. And since I had trained many of them virtually with an interpreter, they greeted me with hugs as brothers who had not seen each other for quite a while, but brothers. And after, after a conversation, we stopped outside at a small trailer after talking with the police, serving, and you get this, Heather, Americana coffee. Uh, that kept us going, that's strong. I said, just hook up an IV. You, you probably like to hook up an IV to those veins. Anyway, um, we were escorted up the hill to the city, to the government building next, where we met with the mayor and some of his staff. This is a city of uh, between quarter and half a million people. I was seated next to him at the head of the conference room table. That's the way they always do things. They want the leader of whatever the team is to be close or right across from the, the person involved. He had a striking resemblance to the Ukrainian President Zelensky. And I had to think, is, this, is that his twin or whatever? But he looked just like him in some ways. And you see some of my pictures when I do a presentation, you'll, you'll kind of get it. But he, he was explaining what they were having to do because Rydney was one of those areas where people had fled in western Ukraine, you know, to get away from the Russians' attacks, especially in the east. And they were having to make a lot of death notifications. That wasn't just a police, a, a police job. That became a job of the city staff as well. And he looked forward to a large conference the next day that he had arranged where I would be offering three different trainings and support. He himself would be in attendance along with his staff. Our next stop after the meeting with the mayor was at a regional refugee center where primarily women and children who had fled the eastern part of Ukraine came seeking help. The center had many volunteers who were registered refugees coming in. And upstairs, there were volunteers sorting clothing and other kinds of items. And those of you who have pets, they also became an area downstairs where they were storing dog food because animals were running loose, obviously, when homes are destroyed, 
people's lives are destroyed and people are destroyed, the animals are running loose. And so there were a lot of those kinds of things, but a lot of donated stuff. Now, my heart told me this is where I would donate the wooden toys that, that a Green Bay toy maker had brought down a lot of toys. And so Angie, if you're watching the service, I've got some left over uh, because we can only ship so much over there and guarantee that it's going to get to us. Um, but a Green Bay toy maker brought the toys down to me where also and then the woman who cuts my hair, a woman named Renee, some of you know her here in town, came by the house one day and gave me hair bows and, and ribbons and things for little girls who had to flee the country could, you know, start to look nice again, plus toiletry items. My heart told me this is another place where this stuff needs to go. While carrying these items into the center with some helpers, I noticed a young mother with a little girl, about seven years old, who came into the center, and clearly they were refugees. You know how you can tell somebody's a refugee? The trauma in their eyes. We call it, in, in the first responder world, the thousand-yard stare. They were lost. A volunteer got them, took them up to the counter downstairs, and lovingly got them registered, spent time with them. And then they were directed to go upstairs to where clothing and some other kinds of supplies were uh, at the time. My dear friend and our interpreter, Alex Garazimov, in Atlanta, was in the hallway talking to Eugene, our driver, who had helped coordinate our trip. And they were gathering some money because we had so much in cash, so much in two debit cards accounts that we used very, very wisely. And and they took some money, the Ukrainian money, to her and gave it to her. And she cried. And my buddy Tim, retired cop from Iowa, a dear friend and prince of a guy, um, had picked up, like at a rummage sale or something, a big old beautiful teddy bear. Not looked like it had ever been used. Like at Goodwill, sometimes you find things with tags on them. He had this big teddy bear that he'd kind of stuffed into his, you know, into our humanitarian checked luggage. And he, he knew this was the person he needed to give that to. So he gave that little girl, causing her face to light up for just a moment with a smile. And I've got pictures of that. You'll probably see in a presentation, so do come back. I, too, gave her some converted money, and she teared up. I have to tell you, at that moment, I had to leave the room to go out into the hallway and wipe away some tears. And then we left. The next day, a very full day, I trained the mayor and many police, police chaplains, police psychologists, and court police officers and others in moral trauma. And how it is different than PTSD. Also complicated grief and loss in war, an appropriate subject, don't you think? And finally, in the afternoon, how to make compassionate death notifications. Because, yeah, they're still making them. That war is far from over. Later that afternoon, I presented on the moral trauma at a law enforcement training center outdoors. And it was really interesting, because we did it outside, and so there was no PowerPoint slides. We just had to kind of wing it, and they were all sitting in military uniforms outside in, in kind of a semicircle. Um, then we hopped in a van, and we rolled toward Kiev. Lots of driving. But not without stopping in the Bucha area. Now. When the war first broke out, Bucha, Borodinko, those areas were the areas where the, the worst atrocities first got the world's attention, where women and children, I'll just use a, a kinder word, but they were sexually assaulted, if there is a kinder word, where um, all these horrible things were being done to people. And um, the, the Russian military that got the world's attention. I will spare you the grim details, nightmarish details. The area was once the home area of our chaplain driver, Eugene, and his family. And we got out of the van for pictures and simply to be present. You could feel, even though it had been relatively cleaned up, you could feel the great loss. You could feel it deep in your core. You could hear in the chambers of your heart the anguish. A woman happened to come by and spoken, of course, Ukrainian to our translator, pointed very high up 
to a bombed but still standing building. B the building between them had been totally destroyed and collapsed and killed a lot of people. And said, that used to be my home. We left the Bucha area with prayers for the loss, the suffering in our hearts. Late that night, again, we rolled into Kiev and stayed in a church-operated hotel. Yeah, they have such places like that. It was kind of interesting. The next morning, we were driven to a large city church in Kiev. In fact, if you saw the Facebook page, that is a gathering of all the chaplains that we actually graduated, where I would speak at a graduation for many new chaplains, along with a few other speakers from the area. Many who soon after their graduation were eager to put on ballistic vests and deploy to the war itself on the Eastern Front, on the border. So, and they were eager to go to the Donbass, you know, to, to the Luhansk areas. I will never forget signing the certificates along with the National Police Colonel who oversaw war crimes and was still doing so. We had become friends prior to this and that friendship has only deepened Kind of a side note to that, we message each other every day, and he shared with me his presentation that he gave at The Hague. So they wanted me up on stage to greet these chaplains since I had done much of the training for them. And when they were called up, I'll never forget, they climbed up onto the stage area, and they gave me the biggest bro hugs. Now, some of you from my last trip know what a, a bro hug is. It's not something I would give to a lady, necessarily. You know, it's kind of like you bump chests and pat each other's back real hard. And so it's one of those kind of things. I'll never forget the joy in their faces. Joy at the privilege of serving Jesus Christ. Joy to be going and being called in a purposeful way into a hellish environment. Risking life and limb to serve as Jesus served. I mean, if you think back, didn't Jesus' disciples... Some of them suffer loss and die. Weren't they persecuted like Jesus? My eyes are misting up just recalling their witness. I can only imagine what they would experience as they pass by, bringing the hope and the love of Jesus. Chapter 23. After the graduation of countless pictures, you know, I was, so many pictures, it's like, oh, no more pictures. Well, we smiled and took pictures with him. Once again, we rolled this to a destination, this time deeper south and east into Ukraine, 70 miles from the border, the Dnipro. If you look at it on the map in English, it says Dnipro, but it's Dnipro or Dnipro. The next morning, I was to speak at a massive campus where I'd been before. It was actually a high-value target, but my team members kind of figured those folks out because special police training, special military training, they had a museum of Russian missiles there that we saw. Uh, some which had been former nuclear weapons. But I was to speak at, to 200 fresh-faced police academy students and staff on moral trauma. Big indoor amphitheater, you know, the kind you see in a lecture hall at a large university that goes up and it's really big, like it'd be at a big university like UWM or UW-Madison. But before we did that, we stayed at a resort at a breakfast that morning, a police psychologist that I have known since our previous trip, a dear friend, and I'll simply call her Oksana, who had fled to Dnipro from her home area of Lizachansk, which is all but destroyed by Russia, was there to greet us. She jumped up and she ran and hugged me with tears in her eyes. I knew she had suffered tremendous loss. Her home had been destroyed. Her regional police headquarters had been bombed. Her dear aunt was killed in a bomb attack, and her body was never recovered, so they could not have a funeral. And now she was between assignments with very little possessions or income. And once again, our hearts told us, by the Spirit's leading, that this is a person who truly, genuinely needs our help. So we gave her money at breakfast, and she sat there and cried. From the resort, we went to the University of Internal Affairs, where I saw several staff that I knew from our previous visit. We were ushered into this very large amphitheater, 
filled with many young faces. And I have to tell you, some of you may be complaining about cold. I'm not complaining because it was hot. Uh, no air conditioning with all of these bodies and it's crammed into the space. And both Alex, my interpreter, and my microphones were so slick with sweat that we nearly dropped it when we were walking around. But we gave them our best for two hours on moral trauma, which was very well received. And after meeting with the dean who, who upstairs in, in his office, was mobilizing resources to help the mental health and spiritual support for the entire city. It's, it's an amazing thing how he wanted to provide this resource to the entire community. I knew that um, this was where I needed to leave our medical supplies left by Aurora. Aurora Bay Care on Green Bay had given me all kinds of trauma care and stuff that I took with me. And that was where those things needed to go. As well as a lot of police patches for my friend who was a Ukrainian war hero that I knew from a previous visit. That evening back at our hotel, Oksana wanted to meet with us for dinner one last time to say goodbye as she was going to the far western Ukraine area close to Hungary in what the Carpathias re mountain region with her 13-year-old adopted daughter to once again work with the regional police department. They didn't give her money to go over there for job transfer. She had no money. So Oksana brought her adopted daughter to dinner and we, of course, paid for their meal. And after dinner, Oksana indicated that she and her daughter wanted, to, wanted me to stay to continue to talk and talk about the loss of her aunt. So with Google Translate, which is kind of an awkward way to, to either talk or do whatever, we made it work. I can't go into the details except to say that it was really a grief counseling session. In talking to my team prior to our last meeting with Oksana, I told them I was going to do something that you might think twice about. I told them I planned on leaving what was left in my business PayPal account for Oksana to help her get housing because housing and prices have been jacked up by landlords because of the people fleeing, taking advantage of them. And so I gave her the pin and what was left in the account. As we finished our coffee, I gave her the card and explained what it was. And again, through tears, she said she wanted to use that money to help support and get her daughter into school as a 13-year-old. It was a modest amount by our standards. And I walked Oksana and her daughter to her car since they were leaving early at 6 o'clock the next morning their time for a 17-hour drive across the country with lots of checkpoints, lots of detours, expecting to see a larger SUV, maybe pulling a trailer, like a U-Haul or something here, um, got to her car, and it was a Czech Republic-made car, I believe. That, imagine a car about the size of a Toyota Corolla hatchback. All of her and her adopted daughter's earthly belongings were in that car. And here she was, a professional. So we said our goodbyes, and I walked to my room. I called Grace, as I needed to process how little these people had and how thankful they were. Then in the morning we rolled once again and we were leaving. We'd gotten alerts that four large rockets launched by Russia. There were four Americans in our van as we were leaving to Dnipro. Dnipro. And somebody said, what if they had our names on them? But well, we, we kind of joked around like that. But they were intercepted by the awesome U.S. air defense mechanism systems they have in most of the large cities now in place, some given by Brit Britain as well. And then we left um, Dnipro. And we went to Lubny, and I'm just about done with the story, but there's so much within all of this, so please bear with me. You know, if you fall asleep, um, I'll have somebody poke you like an usher or something like that. But once again, we went to a retreat center for police that had once been a, a Russian military retreat center. And once again, I presented on what? Moral trauma to police officers. And after the training, we had a small outdoor worship service where we'd ask to try to get him involved our new team member, John, who's a Lutheran pastor in Iowa, retired school administrator, and now Lutheran, uh, only two years, so he's kind of a newbie in this whole worship thing, um, to lead in worship. And I had actually suggested the text, you know, that, uh, you know, where um, Ezekiel's looking over the valley of dry bones. And after that, he and I together offered communion outdoors.
to people. That was so powerful. And after this, once again, we rolled, beginning to loop our way back across the country, over 26, 2,700 kilometers, all said, with very little sleep. National Police Colonel in Kiev said, I want to see you guys before you go. This was two days prior to their Independence Day, independence from the Soviet Union, many years before. And they had arranged in a central city area, he'd arranged parking for us. He is a national police colonel, so he can kind of set aside whatever parking he wants, right? Which felt kind of weird, but that's another story. Um, but he wanted us to, to, to join together with he and his wife and, and another person we knew to go up and down the city streets looking at all these destroyed Russian tanks, multiple rocket launchers, for block after block after block. Some people were standing on them in victory. It was a momentary thing. And of course, Putin was already rattling his sabers, thinking, Independence Day, two days later, I'm going to launch rockets. Well, he did. 58 communities were hit. Um, a woman police officer who had fled Mariupol, which was destroyed, and whose boss, the police chief, was one of the heroic defenders making the last stand in the Avastol steel plant that was in the news for so long. He's now in Russian captivity, about to go on trial, and chances are he'll disappear. But we could tell she was hurting, and again, our heart spoke to us. This is a person who needs money. So we helped her. It was a right and deserving thing to do. Of course, there were hugs and tears. And as we walked back to our cars, there was a grassy area below this beautiful sign, which somebody, you've probably seen this kind of neon sign, which is only two blocks from where, uh, you, you know, the president is, I probably shouldn't say that, but I won't say which direction. Uh, there was brightly lit sign. Below that, there were flags, almost a sea of flags, little Ukrainian flags. And getting down in closer inspection, each flag had a writing on it. It was a name of a defender of the country who had perished in fighting Russia. But I will tell you this, more Russians have died than Ukrainians. So. That was an amazing thing. And after a short night, a very long drive back, across the border, we arrived at our hotel, adjacent to the airport in Warsaw. We had dinner. Our chaplain guide and I led us in prayer before leaving. We're at 6 o'clock that morning, which was like three hours later. We had to be at the airport at 3, so imagine that kind of time. Uh, we flew to a very long journey home. We thank God, my friends. I thank God for all of you for the privilege to minister, to bring hope, to bring your love, because what we brought was not just our love, but your love to them. And I bring their love back. So to shine light into the darkness and to bear witness, I can only simply say this, God is good. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, I thank you for the privilege of having a church and a community that has a very big heart and supports the kind of ministry in the trenches, which it truly was, that allowed us to do what we needed to do, to be representatives, to be ambassadors, to be disciples, if you will. We thank you, God, for that. We thank you for your love. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask what prayers of joy or concern. I don't think we've got any new written ones. Nope. Is, is this one from last week? No, it just it says your name. Okay. So, um, if you have prayers, we're going to have to make it loud enough so that I can repeat. And because I'm kind of a, kind of a brain fogged right now, um, you know, you may have to repeat it if I get it wrong. Okay? Prayers of joy or concern. Anybody? Just a minute. I know. I think I know. For your hubby. Yes, I would just like to thank everyone for their prayers for the surgery that Jerry had on Friday. And he's doing well. Yeah, thank doing, you. Doing well. So. God in your mercy. There are our prayers. Thank you. Glad he's doing well. Other prayers this morning. Everybody wants to get out of the picnic. 
I should have told some jokes in there. But anyway, um, my prayer is, is, is um, I guess, humbleness and the opportunity to minister to them, to bring not just our church, not just our country, to Ukraine. They love us as a country. Uh, and the, uh, the colonel would like me to come back, so stay tuned to do a more extensive training. So, yeah, yeah. That, you got it. You got it, brother. Okay. We did that a lot. But uh, I'm kind of sore from all the bro hugs, too. So, yeah. anyway, would you join me in prayer? Let's, let's have a prayer. <coughs> Gracious and loving God, you call all of us to be disciples in our own way. We don't have to travel to far-flung places in the world to be your disciples. It starts at our doorstep because there are people hurting everywhere. Our neighbors, our friends could be family. And you call all of us to minister to them, to bring hope, your hope, to bring your love, to bring your peace, to bring our presence through which you work. We thank you, God. I'm thankful to be home safe among a family and friends. I'm joyful for the reunions we had in Ukraine and the reunions when we got home. Please continue to keep in our prayers, we pray, God, the Ukrainian people, and that someday, somehow, that this war will end. And they might once again be restored to the peaceful, peace-loving people that they are. And now, gracious God, we together pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Freely and richly has God blessed us. In some measure, it's good that we have shared our gifts of love. So at this time, by way of dedication, we will have a song. And after, after which, then our doxology. Gracious and always loving God, we would ask you accept these gifts, which we, your people, offer up to you. Grant that the causes to which they're devoted be causes of love. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we pray, we share, and we live. Amen. Love, once you've experienced it, you 
spread his love to everyone who want to pass it on. What a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are budding. The birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you want to sing. It's fresh like spring, you want to pass it. for you my friend this happiness that I found you can depend on him it matters not where you're bound I'll shout it from the mountain top I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a moment. <laughs> we could probably sing this a cappella. That's the quickest I've seen us go through a service. That's okay. Take your time. I'm glad these technical experts, when our when our organist is in here, so you get it. <laughs> so we get to go. I'd start us off in the wrong key. So. Well, it looks like the weather's getting nice outside, so we're kind of <laughs> stretching. What's that? That's okay. Okay. Um, can, can you... <laughs> you didn't know we were such a big choir, did you? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Just take a deep breath. Whatever happens, happens. There we go. Now we need the words. <laughs> 